we've been uh, working through the series summer summits and uh, you know and I want to just take a moment to thank and honor uh, Stu. Stu kicked the series off actually a number of weeks ago now and um, uh, it was a great word it's still available if you missed that you can look that up online and, and then Joel the second week he he came in and, and uh, um, uh, talked about Elijah and it was a great word and and actually since since Joel shared that I've sort of been sitting in the story of Elijah a little bit and and want to come back to him uh, this morning because Elijah had a, a number of these mountaintop experiences and when we talk about mountaintops you know like what what that means is these these moments in scripture obviously where people have find themselves on the top of mountains and 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 often it's a, a moment where they have an encounter with God you know God shows up and in a powerful way, in a tangible way, and, and then, you know, like, so it's, a, it's like a spiritual high. And, you know, as you and I, as we live our, our uh, lives, of our faith journey, um, we have those moments as well. We, we may not be necessarily on the top of a mountain physically, but we have a moment where God shows up, you know, there's an answered prayer, or he brings a breakthrough, there's a, there's a miracle, or we're just aware of his presence, those mountaintop moments. And I think, you know, they're really important for us. They've got to be, a, they're, for me, it's an essential part of my, my faith journey is having those moments, those spiritual high, those, those times, uh, mountaintop experiences. And so I want to have a look. If you've got your Bibles there, we're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 18. We've heard it read to us this morning. But I'd love for you to follow uh, through uh, that um, today if you can, if you've got your Bible there. It's great to see some, uh, some new faces here this morning. If it's your first time here with us, you know, we're really, really pleased to be able to welcome you. Uh, to, to be here among us today and praying God's blessing upon you as you join with us. So 1 Kings chapter 18. And so Elijah, he's had these, these moments, you know, where, where he's had mountaintop experiences. But, but what he does now is he finds himself on the top of the mountain in the midst of a famine. There's a famine in the land. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's been going on for two and a half, three years uh, there's been no rain, there's been, uh, you know, there's just uh, shortages of food, water, and, and you know, the, the people have been suffering real hardship. It's been tough. And, uh, you know, they're tired, they're weary, they're over it, they've had enough of this. They, they, they you know, they're, they're sick of it, they want it to end. Um, you know, it probably sounds a bit familiar to you and I, what we're in the midst of at the moment. But here they are, they've had enough of this two and a half to three year famine that's going on, and so Elijah is, uh, he's... He's in the midst of it at the moment. And he's just, where we look at him on top of the mountain, he's just come off the back of an incredible moment on the top of Mount Carmel, which is not the moment we're going to look at today, but this is the moment where, where he's up there and he's built this altar and he's put his animal for sacrifice on the altar and all of Israel is gathered around. The prophets of Baal are there. And then he prays and he says to God, would, would you answer with fire? Would you send the fire upon my altar, upon my sacrifice, to show everybody that you are the one true God. Reveal your power. Demonstrate yourself on this mountain. And then we know the story. The heavens open. Supernatural fire descends, burns up the sacrifice, burns up the altar. In fact, it's, it's an amazing, so amazing that everyone, the entire nation of Israel that are gathered there, fall on their faces and repent and cry out, the Lord is God, and begin to worship him. So it's a real demonstration of God's power, a mountaintop experience. So he's just come off the back of that. And, uh, you know, we don't know how long it was. The time frame's not given. But, but this is what happens next in verse 41. It says, Elijah said to Ahab, go eat and drink, for there is the sound of heavy rain. So Ahab is the king. And, uh, you know, they're in the midst of a famine. And, and he's been told to go eat and drink for there's a sound of heavy rain. So if, if Ahab was to step outside in this moment, not like you and I, if we were to step outside now, we'd get wet. But if Ahab was to step outside in this moment, all he would see would be blue sky. He'd feel the, the heat of the sun beating down. He'd see the ground is dry and cracked. Um, yet he's been told that uh, Elijah says he can hear the sound of rain. So he'd be thinking, mate, this guy's got to be crazy. He's, he's lost it. Um, but really, for Elijah, what's happening here is he's, it's, it's what he's sensing in his spirit. So he's hearing something in his spirit. He's sensing something in his heart. God is showing him that rain is coming. It hasn't arrived yet, but it's coming. And so he's saying, go and celebrate 
now what is about to happen. It's almost like he's saying, you know, start celebrating uh, in anticipation of what God is going to do. Start celebrating now. Uh, God is about to end this famine. He's about to turn things around. There's going to be a breakthrough. So start celebrating, start rejoicing, start preparing for it as if it's happened. Um, when I was like uh, reading this, um, you know, I really felt God sort of speak to me or I sensed something in my spirit. And Because my prayer, and I'm sure others, others have been praying this as well over the last uh, several months, is God, what is your heart for SAJ? What is your heart? for this community of faith. You know, that's been my prayer. And, and I haven't been um, <clears throat> sort of sensing too much, but when I read this verse, I really felt, and I'm going to share it with you this morning, that God was saying that times of refreshing are coming to SAJ. That's what I wrote down. So I read this and I felt times of refreshing are coming to SAJ. And I'm not talking about the rain outside. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit pouring out his presence afresh upon this community of faith. Times of refreshing are coming. And, and I believe that, that he's going to refresh us. And, you know, if, if you're anything like me, I, I need it. I need a fresh touch of the Spirit. I need to be refreshed. This is a, a season that is making us weary. It's, it's tiring us. And so I'm excited about the fact that, that I believe God is going to bring a real season of refreshing for this community of faith. And, uh, and so, so what I'm saying, what I want, I'm calling us to do a little bit is this, is begin to celebrate, begin to start rejoicing and praising God in anticipation of what he's going to do in this place this year. Amen? Amen. And get ready. That's what I'm feeling. Get ready for times of refreshing. Um, start to celebrate as if it's happened. This is what uh, Elijah is saying to the king, King Ahab. Start celebrating. It hasn't happened yet, but it's coming. It's coming in a spiritual sense. In a spiritual sense, you know, there is something about praising God in the midst of the famine. There's something about celebrating in anticipation of what he's about to do. So, so I'm just calling us as a, as a community, as a church family, let's begin to rejoice and celebrate our God, believing that, that he's going to refresh us by his spirit this year. So, so Elijah says to Ahab, um, to start celebrating now, even while the sky is blue. You know, it seems crazy. Start celebrating. The sky is blue. The sun is hot. And verse 42 says, So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah. Everyone say, but Elijah. But Elijah. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. See, celebrating is important. The celebration was important. It was like a, a prophetic anticipation of what was about to happen. Ahab is celebrating. But Elijah, what's he doing? Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. He's going to the top of the mountain again. Same mountain, Mount Carmel. He bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Now, this is a, a posture of prayer. He's taking up a posture of prayer. Um, so while Ahab is celebrating, Elijah is on the top of the mountain and he's taking up this posture of prayer. We don't know what he's praying, what he's saying, in this moment, doesn't tell us, but I imagine it's probably something along the lines of, God, would you end this famine? Would you send rain upon the land? Would you refresh this land? It's been nearly three years. We need you to move. So as Ahab celebrates, Elijah is praying. Both are important. Celebrating as if it's about to happen and praying for it to happen. Both important. The mountain for me is, is a real key in this story. Because, um, you know, like uh, this, this mountain is significant for Elijah. He's just, as I said before, it's a place where he's experienced God answer prayer with fire. Supernatural fire has, has come upon this mountain for Elijah. And now he finds himself praying again. You know, it, sometimes it does matter where we pray. Not all the time, but I think sometimes, you know, if we... You know, if we, we need a fresh sense of faith to rise up within us as we pray, I think it's important to actually find a place where you know that God has moved before. You know, find a place where, where he's answered prayer in the past. Find a place where you've prayed and, and you've seen a miracle, where you've experienced his presence and power. There is something about standing in that place again and praying. Because, you know, 
uh, faith will rise. There's a sense that faith will, be, faith will be stirred in that place because you know that he's moved before. And so I, I can imagine, you know, as Elijah's on the top of this mountain again, praying that, that faith is rising up. He knows what his God can do. So he's saying, God, you've moved on this mountain before. God, you've done it before. Do it again. Do it again. Answer my prayer again. There's something about praying in the place of an encounter, and, and maybe you've experienced that. You know, I know I've been back to places, and I've, and I've stood in those places where God has moved, and, and it does it. It stirs faith. It stirs faith. So he's on this mountain, and he takes up this posture of prayer. And then he sends his servant out to have a look. It says in verse 43, Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. So you can see, you know, the servant, he, he runs off. Elijah's praying, and the servant runs out, looks out towards the sea. What does he see? All he can see is, is the blue sky, the heat of the sun. Nothing's going on, so he runs back. And he says to Elijah, there is nothing there, he said. There is nothing there. So how do we respond in that moment? He says, well, we gave it a good go. Let's, let's head on down the mountain. Let's call the celebrations off. Um, and, and everyone can head home. Now, that's not what happens. You know, not for Elijah anyway. See, because sometimes I think what we can do is we can, we can give up too easily. We can walk away too quickly. And, uh, but not Elijah. The servant comes back and says, there's nothing. So what does Elijah do? He's still on his knees. He's still got his face on the ground. And he's praying. And he says to the servant, go again. Go have another look. So the servant runs out. Sun beating down on him. Has a look. Nothing. Runs back again. Elijah's still there praying and says, go again. A third time he runs out. Has a look. Nothing. Goes back. What does Elijah do? Sends about a fourth time. The servant's probably thinking, hey, can we tag team this a bit? You know, it's pretty hot out here. Can you do some running? He runs out a fourth time. Has a look. Nothing. Runs back again. Five, six. And on the seventh time, seventh time, it says, well, it says seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. I want to say this, you know, I, I believe that whether it was seven times, 17 times, or 70 times, Elijah would have kept pressing in for this breakthrough, praying, crying out to God to answer his prayer, to end the, the, the famine, to send rain, to refresh the land. He would have kept praying. You know, and I, and I think a word, I'm just sort of feeling there's a word for someone in this room or someone watching online right now that, that you could be one prayer away from your breakthrough. You could be one prayer away from your miracle. Don't give up. Don't walk away. Maybe, maybe it's time to go and stand in, on that mountain, stand in that place where God's moved in the past and, and revive that prayer that maybe you've stopped praying. Don't give up. Our God is a God of miracles. He's a God of breakthroughs. He's a God who, for some reason, he's a God who responds to persistence in prayer. Often once is enough. Sometimes it is, but often, and we see in Scripture, that there's persistence in prayer. So there is a celebration. While Ahab, he's celebrating, he's celebrating, he's anticipating. Elijah is praying, and he's praying. In this small cloud, just a tiny cloud. You know, sometimes God's big starts with something really small. Sometimes something significant that God will do can start with something that's small and maybe insignificant. But, you know, the Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Often what God does, the way he moves, he'll start small. And then it's time to, to just uh, get ready for what he's about to do. He's about to bring increase to what he started. So there's a small cloud. And Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot. Go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose. A heavy rain started falling. And Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The famine was over. 
God had heard and answered prayer. The breakthrough had come. The land was being refreshed. Um, I want us to have a look closely at verse 46 uh, this morning. And particularly, uh, I'm thinking, as I was preparing, I was thinking about younger people. If there's a young person in the room, um, now young people, in my definition of a young person is uh, around 30 and under. Um, uh, so if you're over that. But, but actually, we're all young people, amen? We're all young. So uh, is there a young person in the room? Yeah, come on. We're going to have a look at verse 46 because I, I just believe that uh, uh, God is wanting to stir something um, within us today. Verse 46, it says, The power of the Lord came upon Elijah. Stop there. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah. Now, I think there's someone in this room who wants to know what it's like to have the power of the Lord come upon them, yeah? What is it to, to experience the power of the Lord descend, come to rest upon you? Now, maybe you've known that in the past, but, but you've got a desire to experience again. But is there someone who wants to know the power of the Lord upon their life this morning? Is there anyone? Yes. Amen. It's good. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah, and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. So, so picture it. There, there is Ahab. He's in his chariot, being pulled by these horses that are running as fast as they can. They're running along. Then all of a sudden, you know, there's Elijah. He, he tucks everything in. He's looking for the best streamlined. You know, if Lycra was around then, I bet he'd be wearing Lycra. But, uh, but he's streamlined, and he starts running. And as he's running, the power of the Lord comes upon him, and he just sort of runs past the chariot, maybe gives him a wave. And, you know, you've heard of the runner's high. Eh? This, is the, this takes that to a whole nother level. Runner's high. There is running. The Amplified Version says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, giving him supernatural strength. Here's what I'm believing and uh, praying for. And I wrote this down. I'm going to read it. It says, God, would you raise up young people today would you stir another generation that would long to know the power of God upon their lives, that they would know and believe that their destiny lies in the realm of the supernatural? God, is there a young person hungry for miracles, hungry for Holy Spirit power, passionate for the hand of God to move powerfully in them and through them in this day? The Salvation Army needs young people who long for the power of the Spirit to rest upon them. Yeah? Yeah? Not just young, you know, for those of you young at heart, you as well. But, but I'm speaking, we need a generation of, of people whose destiny, they recognize their destiny lies in the realm of the supernatural. <clears throat> We're going to come back. I'm going to pray in a moment um, about that and, and give a bit of a response. Uh, we're not going to call people to the front, but want to have an opportunity to pray. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah. If there's something in you that's stirring, you're saying, yeah, I want to know that. I want to know that. We're going to give an opportunity to pray in a moment. So it rained on the land. The hand of God moved. The land was refreshed. We started with this verse. Um, the beginning of the passage said, Go, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of heavy rain. Go, eat, and drink but there is a sound of heavy rain. Then Elijah heads up to the top of Mount Carmel, his summit, uh, you know, it was a summit of the supernatural, it was a, a mountain of the miraculous for him. He, he really did experience God's presence and power upon this mountain, Mount Carmel. There was celebration, and there was Prayer. And I said before, we're, I'm really sensing that times of refreshing are coming to SAJ. And I think, you know, like, um, um, and if you're here and you're, maybe you're part of another church you're just visiting or, or you're watching online, and I, I would encourage you to, to receive this as well, to begin to pray into this as well. Start celebrating, start rejoicing, start praising God as if he's about to move. As if it's about to happen. As if he's going to rain down his spirit afresh. He's going to bring a time of refreshing, a season of refreshing. We need it. Yeah? 
where he's going to refresh us. There's going to be a fresh revelation of his love, maybe a fresh uh, um, sense of his goodness that we sung about before. Maybe he's going to work a fresh miracle, a fresh answered prayer in your life. Times of refreshing are coming. Start celebrating as if it's about to happen. But I'm going to call us to something else as well. And that's to find our mountain. Find our place of prayer. Don't just celebrate, but start praying. God, we need you to move. You've done it before. We read the history books of the Salvation Army. We read that you've moved in power over the years. God, would you do it again? Refresh us again in this day. So I'm calling us to celebrate and to pray for God to move this year. Times of refreshing are coming. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this picture of Elijah who pursued you on the mountain. He'd already experienced your power. He'd already seen you move on this mountain. And now again, he's kneeling on the same mountain looking for you to move a second time. This time, open the heavens and send rain. And you responded. And Father, as we sit together this uh, significant Sunday because uh, we haven't been together for a while and we, we, we join together, we join our hearts together and pray and say, God, would you please open the heavens over this church. Pour out your spirit afresh. Lord, we, we hear the rain outside. We're praying that you would rain your Holy Spirit down afresh upon our lives. Lord, where, there's, where people are tired and weary, Lord, refresh them, revive them, renew them. Where people are like, maybe like these people who had had enough of the famine. Lord, maybe some of us, we've had enough. God, we pray that you'd come and meet us where we're at. Renew us by your Spirit. Have your way, God, by your Spirit. I invite you to stand. We're going to sing in a moment. But I want to pray as we, we just stand for a moment. Before we sing this song inviting God to fall afresh the power of the Lord came upon Elijah did you catch that? did you see that phrase in the story? you didn't miss that phrase did you? the power of the Lord came upon Elijah the same power that came to rest upon Elijah the same Holy Spirit that um, gave him that supernatural strength is the same Holy Spirit that moves in the church today, yeah? It's the same Holy Spirit. And He wants to come upon people. He wants to come upon young people. He wants to come upon those who are a little bit older. He wants to reveal Himself. Some of us, you know, this is stirring your heart. Your destiny lies within the realm of the supernatural. As you live your life, you've got a desire to see God move with miracles, to see Him move with transforming power, to see prayers answered, to see lives changed and transformed. Well, if that's you as we're standing, I'm just going to encourage you to Lift up your hands in front of you. Just in front of you, we're going to pray. Pray for the power of the Spirit. Maybe to touch you afresh or to, to touch you for the very first time in a way that you haven't known before. We're looking for His power. God, when we read that story, we know that it is the same Holy Spirit upon Elijah. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The same Holy Spirit that moved in, in and through uh, men and women in the New Testament same Holy Spirit that is alive today. and We're praying, God, would you release your power upon your church? Release your power in a new, in a, in a, in a way that maybe we haven't experienced before. But show us your power. Help us to see that something of our destiny is in the realm of the supernatural. Pour out your presence right now. Holy Spirit power in the name of Jesus come upon your people this day and this hour in Jesus name